Hey, welcome to Planet Mark, and today you're gonna have to like, you know, prepare, just make sure you're sitting down. Make sure if you've got a seatbelt on you, strap yourselves in, because we're gonna be talking about the Mandela Effect and why the Mandela Effect happens. We've been doing some research and just got some good examples, and with our psychology background, we're gonna be telling you what we think, what our theory is, why millions of people think the wrong information is true. Firstly, for any of you which don't know the origins of the Mandela Effect, what it actually is, let me ask you this. When did Nelson Mandela die? Was it, very, was it fairly recently, as in the last couple of years? Or was it years and years ago, literally like when he was in prison? The answer, of course, was only a few years ago. It was fairly recently. Yet, some woman named Fiona, I think her name was, she was talking to one of her friends and said, I could have sworn that Nelson Mandela died way back when he was in prison. She then like, um, took to Twitter and soon after, millions and millions of people were agreeing with her. They thought the exact same thing. And you kind of think about like this, why are millions of people thinking that there's no real explanation at the moment why people are thinking this false information. There have been some theories that maybe it's like media manipulation, by some higher reptilian power. Some people even go as far to say, oh, I'm just really inclined with other parallel dimensions. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. I'm going to be telling you why I think that all of these things happen. Okay, firstly, think of this. All right, you need to use your minds. Like, um, if you want to participate in this kind of experiment, see if you think of it like this way, all right. That Queen song, we are the champions, alright? In your head, just go through the entire song, but kind of skip to the end, say, I'll pay my dues on it, we are the champions, we are the champions, we are the champions, we are the champions, dum dum! Right at the end. Because a lot of people would have said, we are the champions, dum dum, of the world. And that's how a lot of people think that the songs end. But it doesn't end like that. It just says, it, they just finish off, we are the champions, dum dum. Then there's a big long pause, and that's the end of the song. Don't believe me, play it now. I'm not lying. But, but the theory is, basically, human minds are pretty much like set up to think of patterns and to go with patterns, things like that. In the middle of the song, it says, we are the champions, of the world, and then he goes into the second verse. That's why you think right at the end, because it doesn't—it doesn't even sound like it ends properly. But it just feels like, a, oh, maybe it's that's the kind of thing that Queen was going for. It's like, oh, I got to play that song again. I don't know, but either way, that's why a lot of people think that the song ends of the world, but it doesn't end of the world. Again, if you don't believe me? Play the song. Okay, next. Anybody that's got a, like a game of Monopoly. Think of, don't look at it, just think of Rich Uncle Penderbergs, or Penderbergs, whatever it's called. Think of what he looks like. Get a good, hard, mental image in your mind. Does he have a top hat? Does he have a moustache? Does he have that kind of whiskey thing? Does he have a cane? Does he have a monocle? No, he doesn't have a monocle. I'm not lying. Got a game of Monopoly. Look it up now. He does not. Have. I think mean, maybe it's like um, the reason for this we think is because again you're looking for pants. It's that kind of stereotype. You think someone's got the hat and the stars. You think automatically like they've got the the monocle because that does that would go with the look. And that's probably why. And he surprisingly does look a lot like the Pringles dude as well. Maybe there's some copyright infringement there. You know? Maybe I'm uncovering this big cover up that the Pringles. But that's what happened. Rich Uncle Pennybags, he made his money, not in real estate, but in Pringles! Okay, the next question. Snow White, that film, the evil queen, she looks into that mirror. What is that oh-so-famous line, if you don't want to say that, like, set in your head, what is that oh-so-famous line that she says? Is it mirror, mirror on the wall? Who's the fairest of them all? I'm pretty sure that Disney would disagree with you, because that's not the line. It's hardly even close. The real line is, magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? 
I have no idea why it changed to mirror mirror. The only thing I can really think of, maybe it just goes better with it instead of magic mirror mirror mirror. It kind of just sounds like more. It just sounds more of a spell. She's an evil queen. That's possibly the only reason that we can really think of. And who is the fairest one of all people? You know, people don't really talk like that now. Who is the fairest of them all? It just you know, it just kind of sounds a lot better. So there's even that film that came out, Mirror Mirror. So you're very, I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have got that wrong. Because of pretty much pop culture just remembers it as Mirror Mirror, but at the same time, no, it's definitely Magic Mirror. Okay, next one, Pikachu's tail. Imagine a picture of Pikachu, Pikachu's tail. Where's the brown bit? Is that at the top? Middle? Bottom? If you look at a picture of Pikachu's tail, it is the brown bits at the bottom. Surprisingly, a lot of people thought that it was at the top. If you think about it, when you're a child, you spend half an hour to an hour a day watching Pokemon on TV, whereas you spend the rest of your time, if you grew up in the 90s like we did, literally living and breathing and playing Pokemon. Like, that is all you did. You played the video games, you had the stuffed toys, you had the Pokemon cards, the stickers. Like, everything everywhere was Pokemon. There was counterfeit everywhere. Where someone was like, yeah, here's Pikachu. And it wouldn't be by Nintendo or Game Freak or whoever owned Pokemon at the time. They wouldn't have released it. It would have been Jim down the corner shop was selling this Pikachu that he made in his back room in his house that kind of thing so there was a lot of stuff like that that was around there was obviously the real stuff as well but there was a lot of cheap kind of counterfeit stuff like Pikachu copyright images and stuff like that on like ice cream and sweets and everything was Pokemon it was just everywhere so I reckon that's where that one would have come from kind of like with Winnie the Pooh like um, sometimes you see like a um, word Pooh on his um, chest on his chest with all that's P as in P-W-H not Pooh on his chest as in Maybe day. Like um, sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't, and that's how you know if it's a um a true likeness of Winnie the Pooh. And also when the Simpsons first came out, like for if you look at the Simpsons comic books, Bart Simpson is wearing a blue t-shirt, and for counterfeit reasons, like uh, things like that, bootlegging, they for the TV show they changed it to red because so that you would know a counterfeit one. A lot of people would have just went for the comics, like um, when making counterfeit ones, which would be blue. Another one is what was the name of the collective TV show with starring Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, uh, Elmer Fudd, the pig person, Rodan and Cody? What was their collection of like um, cartoons called? Because it because it, it certainly wasn't Looney Tunes. It was Looney Tunes. I don't know like um, where this. Really, honestly, Looney Tunes makes so much more sense. I don't know why they didn't just go for that. I think that something to do with the reason why it is Looney Tunes is because it used to be Merry Melodies, and for some reason they changed their name, probably because of racism and things like that. If you want me to do a video on that, and I will comment below. Just say whether you want me to do a video on Merry Melodies and all the controversial cartoons, because, again, I found it really, really interesting. But anyway, the, like, I think another one is because it just, first, it makes so much sense and our brains are really hardwired to think, yeah, like, try and find patterns, things that which make sense. And tunes, sounds like tunes. Why is it tunes? It's got nothing to do with music. And not a lot of people would know that it was from Merry Melodies, even though it's actually at the end of most of the um, cartoons, if not all of them. I've, again, I've not really looked into it. But, yeah. Another one. How do you spell Fruit Loops? Is it like Fruit, F-R-U-I-T, Loops? You probably guess by now that it's not. Because I won't be asking if it was. It's not. It's F R O O T Loops. I think this is one of those ones which it makes more sense if it was Fruit Loops. But I suppose they're going for marketing. All of the O's are the Fruit Loop O's. And maybe they didn't have copyright. And it just makes more sense that we hear that kind of thing that we want to establish with things that we already know. Things that we already know. We already think that we know how to spell fruit. If someone comes around and spells it differently, we don't want to take their way for it, we want to spell it our way. It means that we use the fruit all the time, we, we spell the word fruit, we see the word fruit all the time, we just shoot fruit loops, it's exactly the same. So that's why that happens. Rubik's Cube, how do you spell a Rubik's Cube? Is it R-U-B-I-X? It's not, it's something like R-U-B-I-K-S. 
as I'm guessing because of the person that named it, Mr. Rubix. But I suppose it's the ksh, the Rubix. And it's the kind of mathematical puzzle, it just makes much more sense if it is Rubix. And that's another one which we think kind of establishes like patterns, we establish kind of words with those kinds of things. Okay, imagine a word like um, when you're reading something and you know that something's being spelt wrong, but you know that it makes sense, you know what word it actually is. That's because more of our brains, we kind of, we can read words which are like wrong or it's more the shape of the word. It's more the shapes that we look, there's more like different association that we have with our brains, the different kinds of parts. So words aren't just words, they're loads of other things. Finally, you can come up with as many different of these theories for yourself. But this is why I think, this is why I think that the Nelson Mandela effect actually began. Why I think the woman thought that Nelson Mandela died in prison. I don't know who the hell she thought was president of South Africa for like 10 years ago, but either way. I think it's because white people can't tell the difference between black people. End of video. No, you cannot. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a cultural thing. A lot of people, like um, a lot of the Western people, don't really know many South Africa. This is kind of like a big generalization. Don't generalize. Like um, but unfortunately, you can tell this is what really like happens is that. <laughs> Nelson Mandela was a black guy, and at the time maybe she thought like all black people were the same. I don't know, it's just ignorant white people thinking that there's only one black person they know. It must be Nelson Mandela. Maybe a black person probably did die, but maybe it was like a big deal in Africa and they had a funeral and they saw they just assumed it was Nelson Mandela because that's the only black South African person they know. How could Nelson Mandela have died when he was in prison? Firstly, he was the president of South Africa. Who do they think was the president of South Africa afterwards when he came out? Who do they think the song Free Nelson Mandela was about? And finally, who do they think starred in the Shawshank Redemption? Oh wait, no. Also, here's another one. Maybe it's just like a, a generational thing, but we didn't really ever get taught that much on like Nelson Mandela. Laura's theory is like um, that she never actually saw a picture of Nelson Mandela and she, Nelson Mandela's name always got brung up with the likes of Desmond Tutu, Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King died like quite a while back so maybe that's where the, the, the two are getting mixed up because it's the way that we brought up, it's the way that we taught in schools maybe things should be different, maybe we should have a different way of like discussing all these um, and being taught about these people which protested so furiously for a black civil rights maybe we should be doing more of that kind of important stuff so we don't get people which assume that they're all the same kind of things because they did very similar kind of like um, roles a lot of people disagree with me saying they're not similar at all but then again I don't know too much about it I know a fair bit, I know probably more than the average person but like I say I'm not a scholar these are just all theories but what do you think? Do you think this is some kind of big media conspiracy? Or do you think that you're just more in tune with different dimensions? Comment below, guys. Find it out in the comments below. Like this video, share, then subscribe to Planet Mark. See you in the next one, guys. Boy, 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 boy.